Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of us are not married? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand if you are not married now. If you have reached, okay, let me say this. If you have reached marriageable age and you are not married, raise up your hand. Uh -huh. God bless you now. Any brother that is uh, 20 and above, raise up your hand. Uh -huh. God bless you. Sister, 20 and above, raise up your hand. You will marry in Jesus' name. Briefly, we are going to discuss together the issue of marriage. Let's open to the book of Ma uh, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. We will soon close. Are you there? I want to read verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam for to see what would he call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to every cattle and to every fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a sleep deep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and the clothes, uh, the flesh thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made it a woman and brought it unto, unto man. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. He shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. And there and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Matthew 19. I will read only two scriptures. Don't worry. Matthew 19. Are we there? I want to read from verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for uh, a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read it, that it was made, and uh, that he that made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man pull asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of thy first man and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffer you to put away your wife. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, and have a fornication and marry another, committed adultery, and whosoever marry that what away, committed adultery. Let's look up. The issue of marriage should be taken seriously by every children of God. Because marriage and destiny, they go together. Marriage and destiny, they go hand in hand. And all of us that are here today, we are a product of a particular family. Only God knows the foundation of that marriage. And that is why you have to be very, very careful. Our children of God, who want to get to heaven, who want to make heaven at last, to be very careful when it comes to the issue of marriage. Because marriage is very good, but at the same time, is it can become a yoke. No matter who you become in future, if you are programmed into a wrong marriage, you may not likely achieve your destiny. Because marriage is very, very important. Marriage is like an ocean. You can jump into it, but you cannot jump out. Once you enter, you enter for life. That is why you must pray very well, my brother, my sister, before you enter into it. 
if you ask your parents or you ask all the old men that are married before they became a Christian, they will tell you, if I had known the Lord, I would not have done what I've done. But once you are married, you are married for life. Be very careful. You see, when you look at this uh, standing fan, standing fan, I think I saw it somewhere, that standing fan, when you bought it, there's always a manual attached to it on how to dismantle and put the fan to work, isn't it? The same thing. You can, the manual of every marriage is the Bible. Because God is the one that ordained the, the, the marriage. It's never the idea of man. I read it to you now in the book of Genesis chapter, 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 one, chapter 2. Adam never go to God that he wanted a wife. He never go to God and say, God, I need a wife. He never. It was purely the idea of God. The Bible says, it was, in the beginning, God said, it was not good that a man should be alone. I, God, I will make a help meet for him. That shows that it was never the idea of Adam. It was purely God's idea. God become the author of marriage. He is the author of marriage. And therefore, anybody that leave God aside before they enter into marriage, when crisis come, God will turn his back against such a one. May it not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I have warned you, marriage and destiny goes together. A man came to me about 70 years old. He came to me and said, Daddy, I have a problem. I said, what is it? He said, before I went to UK, they said I must marry. And they gave me a wife to marry. And I told the woman, I want to marry. The woman said, okay. But four days to the wedding, the lady says, no longer interested. After that, they said, well, you cannot go until marry. Then they gave me a lady. And I married the lady. I traveled overseas. When I came back, for a few years, I came back. Me and that lady, we are here for, for those things for many, many years. I retired as a director in the ministry. I didn't have anything in life. Then when the lady couldn't give any child, after about 20-something years, my mother went to the village and gave me another woman, making two. He said the two of them got pregnant the same day. The two of them got pregnant the same day. He said, that is how I begin my life. I try all my life. Even when I was retired as a director, I don't have anything. I put all my load inside a container. I presently, I'm now, I'm now living in the boys quarter of my junior brother. He said, one day, I came back from, I won't tell you the church, I went to that program. When I came back, my mother just sat down and said, Cabo, my son, do they tell you your church that I'm in charge of your problem? I am in charge of your problem. Me and your wife, we are the same thing. We collaborate together to deal with you. And the man is about 70. He said, what can I do? I said, of course, the time has gone. You see, that is why before you enter into marriage, you must pray because marriage and destiny goes together. A wrong marriage leads to a wrong destiny. And you may not likely achieve your destiny if you plan into a wrong marriage. Because of our time, I want to deal with the small, small things there. Choice in marriage. What determines your choice? I want to talk briefly about that one. What determines your choice? Beloved, as children of God, one time or the other, you need choice. But may I warn you, never make any step without talking to God. The Bible says that we should seek the face of God in every area of our life. The way God talks to you in every other thing is the way God will speak to you in the area of marriage. The Bible says acknowledge God in every area of your life. Trust him. Trust the Lord. I want to see the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3. Are we there? Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy way, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. You see, God is interested in directing your path. Therefore, you need to trust God. Trust God. You see, brothers, there's tendency for you to say, ah, how will God know that I need a fat woman? How will God know that I need a slender one? How will God know that I am educated? How will God know God knows everything about your life? The Bible says, in everything, acknowledge him. Acknowledge God. Your choice must not be based on facia, must not be on education, must not be, be on physique. Oh, I want a woman that is tall. I want one that is short. I want that is... No! Forget about those ones. But those ones can change. A thin woman that you are seeing today can become fat tomorrow. A fat one that you see today may be change structure. That should not be the criterion. I have warned you, you make choices. And your choices make you. And because we are women, we are limited. We are limited. God is still answering prayer. When you depend upon the Lord, the Lord will choose for you. I will tell you how to make choices. Are you getting me? After you have prayed, you pray and you pray through. But don't forget something. When God created Eve, do you know what he did? Why he was creating Eve? Adam was not peeping. Was he peeping? Somebody is sleeping. Sister, are you sleeping? When God was creating Eve, was Adam peeping? He was not peeping. He was relaxing. Until God, after he had finished, now brought the finished product and brought it unto Adam. And Adam said, oh, this is truly the flesh of my flesh, the bone of my bone. It shall be called a woman. All those things, they are matter in life. My sister, if you have prayed and God show you a man to marry, never go to that man. That brother, God is leaving me to you. Never you do that. When you do that, you are belittling yourself. What you need to do is, after you have prayed and God has shown you a vision, pray to the same God, go and reveal to that brother. Do you understand? And make sure you pray and you pray through. Brothers, when you pray and God is leading you, never go to that sister directly yourself. After God has spoke to you, you need to go and visit your pastor. Go and tell your pastor. Or if you have married committee, go and tell your married committee. That is the order of the church. I can tell you so many reasons why we do that. If you ask me a question, I will do that. That is the order. Don't go there directly. How does God speak to me? Briefly, God can talk through so many ways. But I have spoken to you. God will talk to you the way you understand. How does God speak? Number one, through his word. God speaks through his word. Through the Bible, the same Bible that you are reading. God can speak to you on who to marry through the same word. Number two, God can speak through the still small voice. Still small voice of the conscience. You can be going one day. Sorry, let me calm down a little. You can be going one day. And you are in the bus stop. Just a flash in your heart. That brother is your husband. That sister is your wife. You don't hear it. After you have prayed, forget about it. You don't hear that voice in your heart. That sister is your, is your wife. How do I know, Lord? God, if you are the one talking to me, please, that sister, I want to see her tomorrow also in the same bus stop. It's not wrong. You said the second day, you saw the same sister. It's wonderful. God, next tomorrow, if you are the one talking to me, that sister must greet me. Of course, just test it. When you are standing there, you just come here and say, Good afternoon, sir. It will happen. It's good to test all these things so you don't fall into error. I can tell you so many stories of those who are lamenting and regretting now. 
I don't know. How does God speak? Voice of the Holy Spirit. Voice of the Holy Spirit. Voice of conscience is quite different from the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit is louder. It's like a command. It will tell you, brother, your sister is coming. Your wife is coming. The next two minutes. Ah, uh-uh. okay. You waited for some times. The person will come. But any voice that you hear, you must put it to test. Like I told you. Do you understand what I'm saying now? The next one is true dream, vision, and revelation. I join them together because that one is the most dangerous of knowing the will of God. I will tell you why. Dream, vision, and revelation. They are good, but they are very dangerous. Because you can dream. You can see vision. You can see revelation. True, four different ways. Number one, your flesh can give you a vision. Can give you a dream. Number two, devil can give you a vision. Can give you a dream. Number three, God can give you a vision. That is why those three, three things you are, must be tested. Let me give an example. If I happen to be your teacher here, a teacher, and you are seeing me every day, and I am not married, there is tendency you dream about me. Is it not true? Because of the constant closeness, you may likely dream about you. If I am your teacher and I see you, maybe you are not many, I'm seeing you constantly, there's likely for me to dream about her. Because of proximity. Are you getting me? Therefore, every dream, every vision must be put to test. Do you understand now? Now, you can ask me, supposing somebody call me, and he said, I saw a vision for you. Go and marry that so and so. Yes, it's good. But before you go into it, go and pray yourself. Go and confirm it. Because God is not the author of confusion. Marriage is more than what you just think about it. Because you are going to live with that woman. You are going to live with that man. Therefore, you need to pray. And make sure you are convinced and you have something tangible to hold on to in case of future. Because a future is coming. When the challenges will come, you say, God, you are the one that talked to me and I heard your voice. This is the command you told me. And the Bible says, Remind me my word. When you remind God his promises, of course, it's bound to change the situation in your life. Are you getting me? These are the issues. Very important. Vision, dream. The next one is audible voice. You can hear audible voice. When you are going, you just hear Victoria, Victoria, Victoria. God, which Victoria are you talking about? Go and pray. God will reveal details more unto you. Are you getting me? The next one is true mature Christian leader. True mature Christian leader. There are some sisters or brothers that are a bit older in age. Maybe you are about 35 or 45. And you have prayed the man of God a leader in your church. They may have prayed and said, you, My sister, go and pray about so and so. They are not forcing you, they are not matchmaker. They only tell you, they only help you. Go and pray. You will now go and pray. If God is confirming it, then you can go and marry. I am not saying, not because our pastor said he's the one. No. Go and pray. And get someone to hold on to in future because of so many stories that may crop up later regarding the issue of marriage. Now, the purpose of God for marriage. Purpose of God for marriage we have about four or five purposes for God. Number one, for companionship. 
for companionship. Don't forget the Bible says, and the two shall be one flesh. Come on. You see, the Bible says the two shall be one flesh. The Bible knew that the woman is from a different family. He knew that the man is a different family. But the two hold on together. The Bible says they shall cleave together and be what? And be one flesh. In our own mathematics, one plus one is equal to what? Very good. That is woman. But in God's mathematics, one plus one is equal to one. Because the Bible says, while Adam was sleeping, he removed the part of the bone air, the side of the bone, and that bone make Adam incomplete. No man is complete without a woman. Do you understand now? Therefore, the bone that was missing, the life of this, my brother, God has put the life of that woman. That is why the Bible said the two of which shall be what? One flesh. Because the bone removed have been replaced. That's why God does not want us to see our wife as somebody different entity. You are one because you are the same bone. Do you understand? Therefore, the Bible says they shall cleave together. Cleaving together. Cleaving together. And be one flesh. Beloved, I have seen many cases. Many cases. I can tell you so many cases. Of people who refuse to obey that injunction of cleaving together. Let me give you one of them. A brother wants to get married in those days when I was the chairman of the marriage committee then and I was saying to go and inspect. I inspect the flat of that brother. I said, who is living with you? Oh, he said, my junior brother. I said, no. If you want to marry, it must be you and your wife alone. We don't want anybody to live with you now. So please, try and... He was like, okay, yes, I will do it. We did the marriage. After six years, the marriage broke. Everything scattered. They share everything. And the brother came and cried and begged. He wants his wife back. I said, how did it happen? When we heard the story, he never, he never, he never separated from his own family. You cannot marry in a family house. It's not done. You marry, the two of you must be together. That's what the Bible wanted. And it has to, it has to be so. If you follow me, shout hallelujah. Companionship. Number one, companionship. Number two, unity. Number three, for fellowship. Number four, for procreation. For procreation. For procreation. When the two join together and be one to be able to procreate, pro pro procreate their kind, to produce your kind, to bring out children that will love the Lord. That's the purpose. To produce your kind, not to go and bring out vagabond, not to go and bring out rebellious children, not to go and bring one, the one that will be throwing stone around the compound of the church when the Bible study is going on. You are going to bring one that will be trainable. The Bible says concerning Abraham. He said, I trust him. For he will train the children in the way of the Lord. Can God say the same thing of you that are parents? So if you know you are not going to bring children for the way of the Lord, don't go and produce children. Go and go and go produce vagabond. God ordained marriage so that you can produce children that fear the Lord. And of course, to have heaven on earth. But may I warn you, the marriage that God ordained in Genesis chapter 2 is not the same marriage in Genesis chapter 3. Something has happened. When the devil penetrated the home, it destroyed everything. And the only legacy that is remaining on the Eden package today is marriage. Are you getting me? The sanctity of marriage. I want to warn you, brothers and sisters, sisters especially, anytime many brothers are pursuing you, they want to marry you. Brothers, anytime many sisters want to marry you, what you don't know is this. 
they have seen something you have not seen and they're about to destroy it you see the kingdom of darkness is watching your glory the giant inside of you we discussed today the devil might have seen it if you have not seen it they can plan wrong marriage into you and destroy that giant let us just say, oh Lord, your call. Ah, he has the head of a husband. Nothing like that, too. He has the head of a man. Nothing like that. What they have seen, you have not seen, is what they are about to destroy. May it not be your portion in the name of Jesus. You need to pray and pray through. There are so many challenges about marriage. Let me give you a few examples now. You see, when you don't pray through, there are some things you may not know. I know the story of a particular brother. He married. The first day on their marriage, by 1 a.m., brother opened his eyes on the bed, at the same bed, though, and saw a big python. You know a python? Big python on the bed. He quickly closed his eyes. He don't know what to do. Then when they woke up, the woman laughed. He said, you have seen me now, Abby. You know me now. But I warn you, never you try to behave funny. Behave funny, I will deal with you. And maybe you don't know. Once you are married, you are married for life. You are married forever. This brother carries his bag. Two shirts. Till today, he ran away from the house. And the woman dealt with her. It's not a long story. It's somebody I know. The woman went to the place of where they sacked the brother. They destroyed him. And the brother became a vagabond, running about doing nothing. Because of wrong marriage. Are you getting me? Be careful. A sister and a brother went on courtship one day. The sister looked at that brother and said, Brother, do you know me? The brother said, Ah. Uh, I know you now. Are you sure you know me? The second day, the brother ran to us and said, Sir, please, I don't want to marry this girl again. I said, Why? He said, Because he asked one question, and the question was so pertinent. And I said, And what was the question? He said, Do I know her? And I said, Brother, don't you know her before you say you want to marry her? He said, Excuse me, I don't know her. Then I asked the lady, why do you say, do you know me? You start just laugh. Is that because he doesn't know me? Beloved, it's a deep question. And I used to tell those who are married now, even those who are married, do you know who your wife is? Do you know who your husband is? God is a revealer of secrets. If you can pray that deep prayer, the Lord will tell you who you marry. If you don't know who you marry, because there are some truth, you will never know about yourself on courtship. That's some truth. You will never know. Until you pray certain prayer before God will reveal to you. A sister wrote me. He said, please, pastor, I was born again, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Spirit. I went to university. I finished my degree and I got married. After I got married, the first day, the second day, the third week, the third, third, third four, five week, my husband said he was on mountain. I tried all I could. After three years, the husband of the family husband, they were asking me, give us children or pack up from our, our, our son's house. He said, I beg, I went to my husband in the night, I knelt down and I cried. Please tell me what is happening. We are married already. The man said, my wife, I am sorry. I cannot do and pastor, what am I going to do? Don't need courtship. We must not taste ourselves. Now I am married. My husband cannot do. What can I do? I said, go and adopt. Go and adopt children and not those children. Because there are some fundamental issues you will never know. Are you getting me? And once you are married, you are married for life. And that is why you should be able to pray. There are certain issues that you will never discover. Don't need courtship. And sometimes when you pray, God will not talk. Until you pray certain prayer, 
Do you understand? A sister one day talk, told me about it. A brother said, Sister, God said, I shall, I shall marry you. That sister just laughed. He said, Brother, go and pray again, I beg. Brother went and prayed and prayed and prayed. Said, sister, God said, I shall marry you. He said, Are you ready? He said, oh, Sister said, Brother, let me tell you one thing. I'm only fine for face. I don't have a womb. Before I became a Christian, I've aborted several times. But my womb has been removed. I don't have a womb again. Can you still marry me? Brother said, God said, I should marry you. God spoke to me, I should marry you. The two of them agreed together and they got married. Today, by the grace of God, they are parents. There is nothing God cannot do on the basis of laying the foundation upon the truth. If you follow me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to stop now.